Now, having said that, in this video, we are mainly going to focus on the fertilizer industries. Fertilizer is being one of the major component of the chemical industries. The fertilizers are the key component in the agriculture industry as well. And production of the nitrogen based fertilizer should give higher priority on any nation, right? As this fertilizer are mainly responsible for the growth of the different plants and for the grains. So all the vegetables that we consume for energy purpose are being only possible with the help of the fertilizer. So this fertilizer are again very important aspect in the chemical technology. So here on the screen you can see that the definition of the fertilizer which is like it is any material of the nature or the synthetic origin either it can be organic or inorganic that applied to the soil or to the plant tissue to supply one or more of the plant nutrition that helps in a growing stage of the plant. So these are the very necessary requirements of the plants. Now in this chapter we are going to see different type of the fertilizer and their production methods. As different plants require nutrition at the different stage of their life. You can see here on the screen that there are different type of the nutrients and these nutrients can be classified or it has different types. You can see here on the screen that the first type is the natural nutrients which are you can see that carbon, hydrogen and oxygen can be considered as the natural nutrients and that are very much necessary for all the plants. Then it comes to the primary nutrients which are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. So this combined together we refer as the NPK right. So these are the nutrients which we can synthesize by ourselves and in this throughout this chapter we are going to see this NPK fertilizer in detail. Then the next type of the nutrients is the secondary nutrients and these are the calcium, sodium, sulfur and the magnesium ions. So these are the secondary nutrients which are required for the plant growth. And lastly we have fourth category of the nutrient as the micronutrients and these are different metals such as copper, zinc, iron and manganese. So these are the all type of the nutrients that required for the growth of the plant material or we can say for the growth of the fruit and vegetable. Now let's understand what are the different components of the fertilizer. Right? There are different components which are need to be essentially in the fertilizers and these are the nitrogen. You can see here that any fertilizer should contain nitrogen as it required during the early stage of the plant growth, right? Nitrogen is always required in an early stage of the plant, plant growth because it helps in the promotion of the development of stems and leaves. So for the development of the stems and leaves on the plant, this nitrogen is always required, right? And it is very much helpful to develop these leaves and stems of different vegetables. Then the second component is your phosphorus. You can see here that it stimulates early growth and accelerates the seeding and fruit formation in the later stage of the growth. So this phosphorus is again very much essential in order to have growth of fruit or we can say seeding materials, right? Different seeds are being, the, the growth of the different seed is being accelerated by using this phosphorus as the fertilizer. Then the third component is your potential. So you can see here it is an essential for the development of the starch of the potatoes and grains and fibrous material of the plant. So with the help of phosphorus we can produce starch in our fruits. So every every fruit or every vegetable that contains starch is need to be having phosphorus as a fertilizer. So you can see here that these are the three basic components that all the fertilizer need to have and they all required in the different stage of the life. As you can see here that nitrogen is always required during early stage of the growth. Then this phosphorus is required at the downside or we can say at the later stage of the growth of the plant or different vegetables. Now without the further ado we will discuss some of the major chemicals that are associated with this fertilizer industry.
and firstly we will focus on the component based on the nitrogen starting with the ammonia ammonia is being one of the largely used chemical ammonia can be produced by the herb process the abundant amount of the nitrogen in air is commercially it is reached with the low cost hydrogen to give ammonia so this abundant amount of the nitrogen which is present in the air we can react to it with hydrogen in order to produce ammonia right so we can say that the production of ammonia is very much uh, efficient or we can say very much economical because a nitrogen is being available on the large quantity you can see here that around 90% of the ammonia product is being consumed in the fertilizer industry in india so whatever ammonia is being produced among that among them 90% is being used for the fertilizer purpose to construct to develop certain different type of the fertilizers so here on the screen you can see that the properties of the ammonia basically ammonia has the chemical uh, empirical formula as nh3 and its molecular weight is 17.03 g per mole then its freezing point is minus 77.7 degrees celsius and its boiling point is again in a minus 33.4 degrees celsius so we can say that this ammonia has very low boiling point then it is very much soluble in water so we can easily absorb ammonia inside the water and its density is only 0.769 kg per meter so these are the different properties that can be asked in your competitive exam for one marks mcqs now having said that let's just discuss the raw material required for the production of the ammonia as but obvious this production of ammonia will require hydrogen and nitrogen this hydrogen can be supplied or can be get from the synthesis gas and this synthesis gas can be produced in the in the petroleum industries and nitrogen is largely available in the air so we can use this raw material to in order to produce ammonia now let's just see what is the quantitative requirement of each and every raw materials for the production of the 1 ton of ammonia that gives 85% of yield you can see here hydrogen required is around 0.21 ton while the nitrogen requirements are slightly are slightly high as 0.96 ton then synthesis catalyst is around 0.2 kg which means only 200 g of the catalyst is being required we will further focus on the type of the catalyst that are being used in this process then power requirement for this process is around 850 kw per hour then fuel for the gas combustion is is 3800 kcal then cooling water required is 12.5 tons and plant capacity of 100 to 1500 tons per day can be achieved with this type of the process now having said that let's just focus on the chemical reaction that is taking place for this production of the ammonia you can see here we are reacting nitrogen and hydrogen in this order with the catalyst of the iron and it will produce two moles of ammonia again this is the exothermic and reversible reaction with the heat of reaction around minus 22.0 kilocalories now let's just quickly discuss the flow sheet for this process as you can see here we are compressing the synthesis gas that is your hydrogen and nitrogen so we are taking one mole of the nitrogen and again we are taking three mole of the hydrogen and we are compressingly both the gases inside our compressor right then this compressed gas move to the oil filter where we remove excess oil or we can say remove the compression oil or the or we remove the oil from the compressor then this purified reactants are then sent to the feed guard converter inside which we convert remaining carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide into the methane that is ch4 and we also remove some amount of h2o if there is a if there is a moisture present then we have to remove that moisture then there is a sulfur these are the different component that are being removed in this feed guard converter so we can say that after feed guard converter we are going to get pure form of the reactants this pure reactants are directly sent to the reactor you can see here that this reactor is of a different shape it is basically shell and tube kind of a reactor which has the one big tube like this 
So as we pass this reactant inside this reactor, it and we heat this thing to around temperature of 500 to 600 degrees Celsius, and we achieve temp pressure of 100 to 1000 atmosphere. And the product gas coming out of this reactor is now then sent to the refrigerator system where we cool our ammonia gas. With this type of the reactor, we can achieve around 8 to 30 percentage of the conversion of your nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia. Again, this conversion depends on the process condition that is how much pressure and temperature you are maintaining inside this reactor. There is equilibrium point which can be achieved with this more sophisticated type of the reactors. Now this product coming out of the reactor is that cooled with the refrigerant and it is directly separated where we separate the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen and recycle it back to the reactor. You can see here that we are separating gases and after cooling that these gases are being recycled back to the reactor. And we purge small amount of the gas in order to maintain the in inert material in this reactor. So this cycle can be completed by this recycle, right? Now the product coming out of the separator is being stored as the ammonia. And again to increase the yield of the entire process, we are continue to recycle this unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen to the reactor. So with this kind of the arrangement, we can achieve around 85 to 90 percentage of the yield. And conversion of 8 to 30 percentage single pass can be achieved. And ammonia can be stored in this spherical type of the storage tank. So this is what the entire flow sheet that you need to remember for the 7 marks question in your GTU exam. This question can be asked as the explain the manufacturing process of ammonia with flow sheet. So you have to explain this entire process starting with the required raw material, their quantitative requirement, then chemical reaction, then you have to draw this flow sheet, then you have to move towards the process description. So again this flow sheet is very important right for the exam point of view. So let's just quickly revise this entire process. As we have started our production from this stage where we feed our reactant that is your hydrogen and nitrogen to the compressor and we compress this gas to desired pressure and we pass them to the oil filter where we remove this compression oil and further it is sent to the feed guard converter where we convert carbon dioxide and monoxide to the methane that is your CH4 and later on some amount of water that is your moisture sulfur are being removed from this feed guard converter and pure reactant are directly sent to this special type of the reactor inside which we achieve, achieve around temperature of 500 to 600 degrees Celsius and pressure of 100 to 10,000 atmosphere. And depending on this temperature pressure condition, we are going to get our conversion between 8 to 30 percentage of ammonia. That is your carbon, that is your hydrogen and nitrogen is being converted into ammonia around 8 to 30 percentage. Now this product stream is then cooled down with the help of refrigerant and into the liquid stage. Then it moved to the separator where we separate unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen and recycle it by providing cooling and a small amount of purge is being performed. Then this gas is recycled back to the reactor. And product stream coming out of the separator is being collected as the storage tank in the storage tank of the ammonia. So overall yield we can achieve is around 85 to 90 percentage and single pass conversion we can achieve is in the range of 8 percentage to the 30 percentage. Now having said that let's just quickly discuss about this process description. As you can see here that ammonia synthesis gas that is your 3 mole of H2O and 1 mole of the nitrogen is compressed to the operating pressure of 100 to 1000 atmosphere depending on the conversion that need to be desired. As we have already explained in this flow sheet that we are going to need this compressor for compressing purpose of the reactor. Now, then this reactor are then sent to the filter to remove compressed oil and additional through the high temperature converter where we convert our carbon dioxide and monoxide into the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide into the methane. And some traces of water H2S and arsenic are being removed, right? In this feed guard converter that we have seen in the flow sheet. Now, this preheated gas flow through the reactor tube which contains promoter porous ion catalyst 
at 500 to 550 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Celsius. As you can see here in this image that this is your tube reactor inside which it contains porous ion catalyst to promote this reaction, right? And this reaction can be performed between 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. Since we are operating at very high temperature and high pressure, such type of the pressure vessel is being required. About 8 to 30 percentage of the conversion can be achieved with this type of the process and that again depend on the process condition that we have used for the production of the ammonia. Then this unconverted nitrogen and hydrogen is being recycled back to the reactor that we have already explained in the flow sheet. So this is what your process description for this process. Right? Now in the next video we will discuss in detail about their manufacturing about their major engineering problem associated with this particular method. We will see you in the next video. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.